And welcome back to coverage here of the World Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Cheon, and it is our pleasure to bring you coverage of the title match. That's right, we are down to just two players, and one of them's gonna walk away a world champion. You know, Paul, one of the big things that the players always hit on when we ask about what it means to them to be the world champion is getting on a magic card. That's gotta be one of the coolest parts about this whole thing. Oh yeah, I mean, that's definitely one of the, the, the coolest parts of becoming the champion. We've all, we already have a pretty good history of some pretty incredible cards, right? Elite Spellbinder all over the place. If you're playing white in this format, that's the card that you want. And then of course, Javier Dominguez with Fervent Champion. So I imagine right. that string is gonna continue. So winning will give you the opportunity, opportunity to be immortalized onto a magic card. Is it true that you get to design it from top to bottom, just whatever you submit gets put on the card? Is that how it uh, works? No, cause uh, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of these pl uh, players, they want their cards to be as good as possible. And well, you know, Balance, there has to be something to be said about balance, right? So, uh, you know, right. uh, I, I, I believe there was a request for Elite Spellbinder to potentially have Flash. Oh, Don't wow. think that would have been good, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, you know. well. All right, well, our players are just about ready in the feature match area playing for that, and the title of world champion is Yuta Takahashi from Japan. Yuta has had an absolutely epic run in standard here at the World Championship after a disastrous 03 start in booster draft. Utah is perfect in standard oh. <laughs> nine and oh. Line him up and he knocks him out. He's looking to make it 10 people in a row that he's beaten. And the only person standing in his way is Jean Emmanuel Dupra, somebody who's actually found himself in the finals of one of these style events where you're the last person standing twice now, hasn't yet quite been able to get over the hump and take the trophy down. And he's trying to do that here on the biggest stage we have. Dragon's Fire is gonna take out the first threat on the other side, Paul. That's a 2-2 two -two wolf from a, Rangers, uh, from a Ranger class, excuse me. Yeah, and things are sequencing up beautifully here for Takahashi. Turn two, kill your threat, iteration hit, land drops. He's set here to kind of run out that Goldspan Dragon on curve with the Smoldering Egg next turn as well. We're going to be talking a lot about Goldspan Dragon over the course of this match, Paul, as it's really the card that defines both of these players' decks and perhaps a little slept on uh, for the tournament here as Goldspan Dragon finds itself against another deck. Now, these are significantly differently built decks, one of them primarily blue red the other one primarily green red but they both focus on that really powerful five drop at the top yeah it, it almost feels like people have just kind of not paid attention to this card right it's it's almost been forgotten which is uh, strange considering how dominant this creature was in the previous standard format but you know people have been trying out a lot of the newer cards and goldspan dragon has kind of fallen to the wayside people have been just choosing to play other threats instead but now, mm -hmm. I mean, both of these players, we just have a Goldspan Dragon Mirror. These are the two kind of top decks that people tried coming into the new standard environment. And we, here we are again, you know, back at square one here. Goldspan Dragon against Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, both players had similar uh, thought processes as well, where they kind of kept it simple, right? Like Jean Emanuel was like, have you seen all these cards they let you play right now? These are still really, really good. And you should be paying attention to them. And... Uh, so he played them, and on the other side, Yuta said that he felt in a field with Mono Green and Epiphany, he would rather be focused a little lower on the curve with the Goldspan Dragon and getting the job done through that. Now, we see not one, but two Ranger class, and one of them gets upgraded to, to level two, and that lets the three damage come in from the Wolf. But in the meantime, you said it before, Paul, things looking really good here for Yuta is he has time to just calmly resolve a memory deluge without being assaulted on his life total. Yeah. Given the way that you see Jean Emmanuel sequence his spells here, if you're Yuta, you have to think that there is a really good chance here that the prod does have that removal spell, the dragon's fire into the into the Goldspan Dragon. Uh, if Jean Emmanuel chooses to fire it off here, however, on his turn, Yuta Takahashi does have the Jwari Disruption, which, of course, the Pra also needs to be aware of. That's right. It could get very awkward for Dupra, because he's clearly lined up this Dragon's Fire, and here it is, Goldspan Dragon hits the battlefield, and Dupra... Oh, this disruption. Oh, oh man. Jwari disruption looking <laughs> fantastic here, and of course, this is one of the huge strengths of 
Goldspan Dragon is that it usually gives you mana to play your counter spells. And that's exactly what happens here. Now, there is a backup plan for Jean Emmanuel. Yep. He's got another Dragon's Fire. So he saw this coming. I'm curious to see if Yuta runs out Smoldering Egg here, too. He doesn't have anything else to cast. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, but John Emmanuel really wanted to get it off the battlefield on that turn. That way he would have been able to deploy the Moonvale region. But now he's looking at he's looking at this Goldspan Dragon, and now, I mean, he can Dragon's Fire this, but Yuta Takahashi now will get treasure number two and then can potentially protect the Goldspan Dragon with that Divide by Zero in his hand. Wow. Yeah, that's the, that was the deciding factor there for Utah on whether to run out the egg or not, is that if he's okay with burning all of his treasure, if his t dragon gets targeted, that does open up divide by zero. So he does have a way to protect his card. And, and this cold spit dragon is just going to do so much work here. I don't think John really has much of an option here. I mean, he can just run out the, the regent, but... Yeah. The bad news, of course, for Utah is that if he returns the Dragon's Fire with Divide by Zero, well, Jean Emmanuel can recast it, right? Right. So he's simply just going to Divide by Zero and bounce the Goldspan Dragon itself, okay. right? Replay it next turn. Still has a treasure available. And then if you just put replay it next turn, you're okay. You know, and hey, now he's going to is the great equalizer here, isn't it? Absolutely. And, he, and oh now boy. he's going to be able to get mascot ex uh, exhibition. He can even just cast the next turn if he wants. Although I imagine he's going to go for the dragon instead. That's interesting. Yeah, he actually has a decision there. I, I can't imagine John Emanuel is going to be happy with either option here as he's kind of being given a taste of his own medicine. Goldspan dragon over and over again. That's what we've seen John Emanuel do to get to this point in the tournament. He's going to level up the other Ranger class and get in for five. You know, that wolf is a nice clock, but you got to look over at Yuta Takahashi and think he's got the advantage with his hand here. Yeah, and this is nice. Going for the pump here. Five, five is big. Yuta Takahashi has several four damage removal spells in his deck, including cards like Thundering Rebuke. So now this means that at least the wolf has less removal spells that Takahashi can hit it with. You to deciding how he wants to proceed. And it's the good boy back in action again. Goldspan Dragon. This time, no chill. It's going to crunch in. Down to 12 goes John Emmanuel Dupra. Another treasure is going to hit the battlefield. And once again, we could see Smoldering Egg hit here as well. Yeah, and keep in mind, I mean, Yuta Takahashi has the option of two different seven mana spells to play <laughs> next turn, which would instantly flip the Smoldering Egg. Wow. It's do you want to set up for the future or do you want some stuff right now? But either way, that is going to be huge pressure on John Emanuel. His deck does have just enough defensive spells to, you know, let him not die right away to a gold span or maybe counter some big spell. But, you know, for the most part, it's an aggressive deck. He is looking to curve out and get you dead fairly quickly. And uh, that means that he doesn't have answers for everything. And that's what we see here. Yeah. And how, how good is this Shatter Skull smash in here? Is it, is it going to do anything? Well, John Emanuel is just one mana short from even being able to cast it for four to yeah. try and get one of these threats off the battlefield. He can wait next turn, right? You get a treasure off the Prosperous Innkeeper, but that means you're not playing Moonvale Regent this turn. And at this point, he might he, that, that is the threat that he probably wants to lay out here. Tough stuff here for John Emanuel. As is often the case, he's a mana short from doing what he really would prefer to do. And while he has done a good job on the life total, you see Yuta is now down to five. He is getting hit pretty hard. John Emanuel's life total is very much under threat as well. Yeah, I mean, Yuta has just two fantastic options here, right? He can either choose to put a ton of chump blockers in the way, right, with mascot exhibition. I say chump blockers, but they're also just potentially lethal attackers on the following turn. Right, right. The, the other thing that he can do is just flashback memory deluge, see what he gets. Gold, attacking with Goldspan Dragon will give you two treasures. So there's a really high likelihood that Yuta Takahashi can find two spells to cast, and that's 12 damage, right? Goldspan Dragon 4, Ashmouth Dragon 4, and then the two spells that you can potentially cast post-memory deluge after Goldspan Dragon attacks. Okay, well, it's Prosperous Innkeeper now for Dupra. 
and <clears throat> he can cast Moonveil Regent as a yeah, blocker. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's not where you want to be, but it does block. Yeah, it'll it'll get in the way of that Goldspan Dragon, and Takahashi probably going to look for a way to get that region off the battlefield. Shuari Disruption, not really what he wants to see here. That is technically a spell. Mm -hmm. So if he deluges into a two mana instant and just wants to cast two spells, that's four damage that he can get off with the Ashmouth Dragon after it flips with the deluge. Not okay. ideal. You don't really want to counter your own spell, but hey, it's it's an option. If it turns into shock, then you need a exactly. shock, and that's fair enough. Okay. Also interesting to note the Prosperous Innkeeper plus Moonvale Regent bumping up Depra from 12 to 13. And currently, at least, we're looking at everything in evens here. So that represents another activation or even up to another turn, depending on how this goes. Okay, hey, Goldspan Dragon's going to crunch. Wow. And the assumption here is that Moonvale Regent would block, but John Emanuel is a very thoughtful player, and he's looking and saying, I've got you to five. Yeah, if you attack what... He does know about the max mascot exhibition, though, right? And that mascot mm -hmm. exhibition represents three blockers, including a flyer. Right. That does make it very difficult. Now, of course, I look back at Shatter Skull smashing in hand. And these are the, the iterations that John Emanuel has to go through here. And you can see he's he's running the numbers in his head. Yeah. The nice thing if you're Takahashi, though, is even if your Goldspan Dragon dies, you still have just enough mana to cast Mascot Exhibition and keep up Jwari Disruption for a potential Shatter Skull smashing if John Emanuel taps out for it. All right, it is going to be Mascot Exhibition. That is going to transform the egg. The Goldspan Dragon did not get blocked. And let's see what he can find. It's another Prosperous Innkeeper. Yeah, and, I, and, and I, I mean, I think Takahashi has turned it around here. This is, this is this just... This is close, oh. though, right? Like... Well, it would be closer if Takahashi didn't have this disruption. But given the disruption, Takahashi is going to be able to counter this okay. and then deal two damage and, you know, two damage to maybe the innkeeper or something here. Yeah, this is an absolute beating. Let the Moonville trigger resolve, he says. And he actually gets a little upgraded to a negate, but no mana available for yeah, it. And there's yeah, a Jwari yeah, disruption. Yeah. And if John Emanuel <laughs> says, no, anything Please. but that. The two damage, by the way, just went upstairs, John Emanuel, down to seven in this huge board state for Yuta Takahashi. He has dominated standard for this entire event, and it looks like game one's going to go his way. He's in the lead. Yeah, I mean, it's so difficult to, you know, as an aggressive deck, to fight through an active Ashmouth Dragon, right? I mean, this deck is just capable of chaining so many spells together, and the additional mana that you get off that Goldspan Dragon means just uh, Yuta next turn is probably just going to completely eradicate Jean Emmanuel's side of the battlefield and attack for lethal. Yeah, that does look like it. The Memory Deluge represents two damage itself, and then it can find any number of cheap spells that you can just put on the stack to start throwing around more damage. We're going to see the wolf come in as a 9-9 now, but it's going to get blocked on the ground by the 3-2 token and back over. Oh, my God, there's expressive iteration as well. These are exactly the type of cards you want to see when you have an Ashmouth Dragon going, and these are going to go upstairs. And, yeah, he found a Dragon's Fire as well. Just basically looking for things that he can put on the stack at this point for Yuta Takahashi, and the rest is history. Here comes Dragon's Fire. Yeah, I mean, he didn't He's, even need another spell after no. iteration. Just if he attacks with everything, that's just enough for lethal. Right, and he gets to make sure that everything dies here. There is going to be a damage uh, to throw around thanks to the Moonvale Regent's death trigger. But as it stands, crunch, crunch, and that is game number one. Going to Yuta Takahashi. If you're just tuning in, we're in our title match. But I will remind you that this is best two out of three matches so this is merely the first match of what could be three 
but will certainly be two at the least. So long way to go here, but uh, a good start for Utah. Yeah, and, and take a look at Utah Cyborg plan. No more Alrun's Epiphany after sideboard. He is just straight, is it dragons, board in as much interaction as possible, kill all your creatures and win with my Goldspan Dragon. Love it. I absolutely love it. He also doesn't want to mess around with negates on the other side and stuff like that. Look, those have plenty of targets in his deck, but he doesn't need to give him some huge seven mana one. Oof. That I think that's is two lands. Hand. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to tell with all it this. It is a up. two lander. Um, yeah. <laughs> one of them's a tap land. Yeah, sure, right? I, you can play the egg on two or even. Yeah, it's hands just if you really. Need to. It's just painful because if you can't find a land, you're going to have to take three yeah. to play your Burning Hands or Smolding it. But you're on the draw. Oh, wow. He okay. sent it back. And this one's worse. Yeah. Well, this, this is, is an a one actual lander. one lander. And yeah, so. it's a six card hand as well. I wonder if he can keep it. No. He mulliganed it. Yeah. All right. But he has found a keeper now. And it looks decent. He's got Expressive Iteration, which always helps when you're on a mulligan. And then he also has Smoldering Egg. He did yeah. say when we talked to him that he felt like if John Emanuel had his best starts, that he couldn't win. That Utah felt like that that pretty much locks him out. He just doesn't have the interaction to go with the really great starts from John Emanuel. But John is also on six cards here to the five here from Utah. Yeah, and John also going to want a couple extra lands here as he kept the two lander. Finds one straight away. Yeah, and I mean, this is about as good of a mulligan to five, honestly, as you can ask for if you're Yuta Takahashi. You've got yes. your egg, which this deck is really great at flipping. You have iteration, and if you hit a land off the iteration, boom, you're you're not down that card anymore, right? And so, um, yeah, I mean, this is probably the best five for him. There's Ranger class to start things off. It could have been Magda, but John Emanuel decided to go for Ranger class instead. And here we go, Smoldering Egg. There is a lot of eggs in that basket, as it were. If that Smoldering Egg can transform and actually do things, that could get you to right back in after this mulligan. Yeah, absolutely. And as it stands, John Emanuel currently does not have an answer. He's only going to be able to get in for a couple of damage here. Yuta stays at 18 after this attack with the two creatures. Okay, is it expressive iteration time, or do we need to use a Dragon's Fire? I guess he's going to answer that question for me straight away. Yeah, we definitely want to see a main phase Dragon's Fire here. We do not want to see day turn into night. So you will see Yuta trying to cast whatever removal spells on, uh, on his turn as often as possible. But this forest here, huge for the prize. Now he can just slam a Seeker's Chariot. Yeah, that looks very strong. A quick block here on Smoldering Egg. Yuta knows that he needs to use every resource at his disposal on a mulligan to five. There's no wiggle room, but there it is. A Seekus Chariot on the battlefield. And untap a second land. memory deluge. Untap land? You really need untap land. Okay. There it is. Wow, that's a lot of memory deluges. He's finally going to get to shuffle one or put one back on the bottom, but three of those in hand's pretty rough. Okay, so Burning Hands gets reserved for the Asika's Chariot, but he's kind of under assault here, isn't he? He is, and he doesn't have Blue Source number two here to cast the three memory deluges yeah. that he has in his hand. Boy, you know, it's funny, because even if he did, he'd probably feel a little strange about that turn. He's all in on this Smoldering Egg, no doubt about it. He will not be able to transform it as it stands. The Burning Hands will get it to six. He needs one more of any type. An island would certainly be fine to do it, but he also could find any number of spells like, you know, an expressive iteration or anything like that. One really nice thing for Jean Emmanuel in this particular matchup is the fact that he doesn't really have to worry about sweepers, right? Yuta mm. Takahashi is playing eggs and dragons, so he doesn't really have to play around burn down the house, meaning he doesn't really need to hold back very many threats. He can just kind of play everything that he has in his hand and try to put maximum pressure on and win that way. Okay, so the Ranger class is going to get activated. And once again, John Emanuel just hates playing into Burning Hands. He never does it. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, you know what? I would rather just get it for less damage than play into your Burning Hands. And the question from Utah's perspective is, can he afford to not do anything this turn? And you know what? Every time that he's done this, 
his opponent has had the burning hands. Yes. <laughs> Yuta and Yuta's like, nice. why didn't you do this? Every time on the arena ladder, everybody crews the chariot. Like, that's yep. just the thing you do. People don't understand how many levels high magic actually goes. When, when you get to watch professional players like these two play, then you start to figure it out. Like, oh, okay. You're not just <laughs> casting random spells and hoping that you get there. This is a much different game. And here we go. Burning Hands, Smoldering Egg up to six, not quite there. This does mean, though, that Yuta's only going to take two, so he's at 16. Another Ranger class is going to hit the battlefield, but can he find a castable spell or an untapped blue source? Ugh. That's really tough. I spoke too soon. It was a castable spell, but I meant spell spell, as in something to trigger the Smoldering Egg. That might have been it, right? I, I mean, yeah. it's not over here, but like, oh, he really needed to get that that dragon on the battlefield from the smoldering egg this right. turn. And, and with the two eggs now, and with the fact that John Emanuel doesn't have a whole lot of action left, at this point, he might not be able to play around Burning Hands. He might just need to just get in there. Which is, of course, bad news for Yuta Takahashi, because he would much prefer now <laughs> if John Emanuel was, uh, take, took the more conservative line. But the Magda pre-combat might be a bit of a harbinger of things to come here as Adesika's Chariot looks like it wants to get in the red zone. John Actually, Emanuel, he's just playing as if he can see his opponent's hand here, Paul. <laughs> right, and he can play the land here and even activate Den of the Bugbear for maximum pressure if he wants. The other line, of course, is also to just take the other Ranger class and level it up. Interesting. He's going to do that. Kind of like the idea of maximum pressure, but this is pretty close. This will give him the chariot plus one of the cats that, if blocked, will kill the smoldering egg. And that means that basically an egg gets to soak up two damage, or they can soak up up to six, but at the cost of the uh, the junior egg there. Yeah, I imagine John Emmanuel, yeah, want, like, you, like you mentioned, will probably want to put two counters on one of these tokens and then probably copy the tapped wolf. Mm -hmm. Copy something that's copy, copy something that's not attacking here. Potentially even the treasure, given that he's got the ranger class in play. He could start thinking about, okay, this looks good. I assume this plan will work over the course of the next turn or two. But if it doesn't, ranger class level three is certainly something nice to lean back on. That's right. Okay, so the chariot gets a trigger on the attack. Same with Ranger class and the other one. Okay, so make a new wolf, two counters on one of the cats, soak up two, and he's gonna take the rest. So that's eight, down to eight goes Yuta Takahashi. Certainly this is his last chance to do Iteration? it if it's not too late. Wow, burning hands. Yeah. So with the, with the Burning Hands, he now has an answer to the Asika's Chariot. And the one of the Smoldering Eggs will turn into a 4-4 that will eat one of the creatures. But this is still a lot of power, potentially, yeah, coming in this turn. Yeah, he trade it off. Like, this is... Once again, remember, life. there is a Den of the Bugbear oh, in play yeah. as well. And once again, Jean Emmanuel is doing some math. I mean, this is probably one of the most important turns here of this game. Yeah, this is a critical turn. Jean Emmanuel de Prop with an overwhelming board presence at the moment. But he did just commit to the chariot. That means a wolf and Magda are not going to be entering the red zone. And this helps out Yuta Takahashi. Does he want to activate the land? <laughs> Yuta's <laughs> Yuta has I'm seen <laughs> enough. He is just going to scoop him up, and that's going to be GG as we head into a game number three. Jean Emmanuel Dupra evens things up against Yuta Takahashi as he concedes kind of out of nowhere there. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to save my brain power. We, we still have another match to play, maybe even three. I'm going to save my brain power. I'm pretty sure I'm dead. I got nothing. You're trying to figure out if I have something, but you're probably attacking with everything, and I'm not coming back from this. All right. Let's head into a game three then. Uh, that was 
a bit of a stifled game from both of our players. Three mulligans between them. Let's get a nice fair one here for game number three in our opening match. Ooh, this one is... Yikes. Tough That's to keep. That's an easy mulligan. Yeah. This one's a keep, though, from Utah. Yeah. And, and what about for Jean Emmanuel? Is that a one-lander? No, it's that a two-lander. That the, then the bugbear with, is a two-lander, so that hand is totally fine. Yeah. Looking pretty good, actually. We also might get to see the Kessig Naturalist do its thing. We haven't really seen it shine today, but um, it can, you know, do a, a Magda impersonation. And I just want to point out something a little unusual that Yuta Takahashi chose to do there. Most people playing this deck, myself included, would not even dream of bottoming Thundering Rebuke from that hand. But in that mulligan, that is the card that Yuta Takahashi chose to put to the bottom here. Wow. I'm surprised to see that. As a result, he does have a lot of action here. He's going to be able to see a ton of cards. Expressive Iteration times two, as well as Prismari Command. He also has Juari Disruption, which got John Emanuel a bit earlier in the day. He's certainly going to be thinking about it. I assume yeah, I, that you two would fire it off on effectively anything at this point. Well, and keep in mind, Yuta took three here. So... You know Yuta's going to have something for whatever you play. Right. So you probably play the one that you, you want to die, right? Poor Kessig Naturalist. You're just never going to get your moment. I'm sorry, bud. Yeah. But uh, into the yeah. graveyard you, directly. You tried. I guess it got in for three. You, you could maybe... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a stretch. All right, here comes Expressive Iteration looking for a land and some action, and it found it. Yeah, very solid. Just... We'll continue to have answers to Jean Emmanuel's threats here. Yeah, burning hands kind of lined up for a Seekus chariot already. But and boy, those threats are big time for Jean Emmanuel. Look at that hand. Yeah. Holy smokes. He has a chariot, a gold span, and a moon veil dragon with Magda and a ranger class. And he has a land here too. Like that hand is sweet. Yeah, and, and Chariot especially is just so problematic. I mean, we yeah. talk about how good Prismari Command is against Chariot. It's still not a clean one for one, right? They still have a 2-2 you have to deal with in those instances. And that's kind of like the high, the, the, the upside there. You're like, wow, I got the Prismari Command and the Seekers Chariot. I got away with something. It's like, no, you were still down on that exchange. Yuta Takahashi doesn't know this, but he really would want... John Emmanuel here to play Magda, giving just him a spike it. nice little juicy target for the spike field hazard. Oh, just spike it. Oh, and John Emmanuel's going to give him the option here, too. Okay, things have lined up for Utah. I Utah mean... spent about three and a half hours away from playing Magic here today <laughs> because of his great uh, play earlier in the day. And it looks like he's found his rhythm again as he hits Spike Field Hazard, nabs Magda, and John Emanuel's like, come on. Yeah, Stop because having it. Yuta Takahashi plays lots of Shatter Skull Smashings. You want more Shatter Skull Smashings in a deck with four smell Smoldering Egg main. So he probably doesn't have too many Spike Field Hazards in his deck. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, Expressive Iteration sees Juari Disruption Island Burning Hands again. This looks similar to the last one. In fact, he has one. What? He has one Spike Field Hazard, which, so is, that was which is why you got the nice. Hazard. Which is why you got the nice. Yeah, that's tough. Couldn't really play around that. This is an interesting choice here for, for Utah. He's going to go with the Juari Disruption instead of the second copy of Burning Hands. You know, if you can counter a Chariot on the way down, so much better you don't get the cats. Yeah. And, and the, the threats that Yuta is really concerned about are those expensive cards, right? It is the Seekers Chariot and the Goldspan Dragon. And if Jean Emmanuel on turn four does nothing to play around Juari Disruption, that's also fine for Yuta Takahashi. Mm -hmm. Now, he took the middle ground and playing Ranger class. Now, that's... Pri or at least partially because he doesn't actually have a fourth land to play here, Paul. But uh, but his hand is just unbelievable for when he does get rolling. Yeah, 
Yuta debating whether or not he just wants to keep trying to use as much of his mana as possible here, debating the merits of going Burning Hands on this 2-2. He does have a Prismari Command, which would also do a nice job of just getting the 2-2 off the battlefield while filtering through your deck, though. That's true. All right. A Mountain off the top of the library means the Frostmoil Snarl comes in untapped, and he can play the type of game that he likes to play. Yuta loves decks where you get to just pass the turn and make your decisions in reaction to your opponent. He's famous for loving the fairies deck. He also plays rogues, uh, you know, which is a similar archetype. And now he gets to do his best impression of that. Prismari command, really nice here. Yeah, because there did end up being a, a second Asika's Chariot in hand for Jean Emmanuel as well. And that gives Yuta an answer for that. So a land off the top. First things first, though. All right, it looks like Prismari command is actually just going to do gonna get two. a loot here. And filter away maybe some lands or something. Yeah. Five is all you need, right? You boarded out the Epiphanies. So right. you just need the five. He's got the five in play. So he's in, a, he's in a great spot here. Still probably wants to keep that disruption up for the potential land into four drop here. Super interesting here because you can see Yuta has done a very good job at keeping the threats at bay. He's at 17. The only damage he's taken is from his own land. But... He doesn't have anything to push forward with yet, right? There's nothing that's going to lock up the game for him. There's no gold span dragon. And there's no threat at all, in fact. He has purely reaction spells in hand. Saw it coming, divide by zero, and Jwari disruption at this point. Now, that's fine. He will need to find those threats at some point, though. Yeah, and again, Yura Takahashi throwing away the burning hands there with the loot and choosing to keep land instead. And Yuta says, got him, as Hisika's Chariot goes on the stack. And there's Jwari Disruption to nail it. Perfect for Yuta. He's getting full Ooh, value. And there's a memory deluge. That's right big. when I mentioned it, that he needed something to push him forward into the game, he found it. Yuta Woo! debating whether or not he wants to foretell the saw it coming, as he'll still have mana for memory deluge. That's right. He can cast any one of his spells here. He can choose. Here's Coldspan Dragon, and that's going to be a must answer. Takahashi thinking, should I divide by zero or just saw it coming this? It's going to be more efficient here. He's going to get Mascot Exhibition, which he's only a mana away from casting. Though, leaving the shields down at main this phase. point, probably not where he wants to be. So why, why is he main phasing this, Paul? He wow. just really wants to make sure that he continues hitting land drops here. So he okay, wants to well, main phases in addition to play around potential counter magic that Johnny Emanuel could have. Okay. Well, he didn't. Yeah. He misses land drop, but that means that it's spell spell coming into hand for him. So, you know, could be worse. Right. But the thing is, I mean, given how Johnny Emanuel played the last turn, you would think that it's pretty likely that he's going to go for Goldspan Dragon again. Now, Jean Emanuel does have a better line here to play around a side coming here that's foretold mm -hmm. again only one side coming so it's pretty hard to play around he can just go a seeker's chariot into magda this turn to have a little uh, to to ensure that at least one threat sticks this turn not really the the threat of choice as we're going to see saw it coming nab Asika's chariot but at least he'll finally get yep. something and john emmanuel just gives him the <laughs> thumbs up he's like all the one-ups coming out all the one-ups this game yeah and there's that magda so he finally does get something on the battlefield but it doesn't do any damage right now oh. in fact it does nothing at all and here comes goldspan dragon now uh. for yuta takahashi as he turns the corner smashes in creates a treasure token he even has answers for magda if he needs them yeah, and now Yuta is firmly in the driver's seat now. He's got Divide by Zero for Goldspan Dragon. He can even Dragon's Fire if he wants to kill it. I yep. imagine he's going to lead with the Divide by Zero here, but you know now he's the one. You know He talked about this too. It's really about who gets Goldspan Dragon into play first, and right now it's him. Okay, well, it's going to be Reckless Stormseeker instead for Jean Emmanuel, but uh, Yuta also has the answer for that. He has astutely made sure that it stayed daytime. You mentioned that before casting some spells on his own main phase, even though they're instants. And uh, that means that it's just going to be Reckless Storm Seeker here. But with Dragon's Fire in hand... I wonder hmm. if Yuta's going to kill Magda. Yeah, he is. Oh, God, I love this. I love it. This is a sweet play here from Yuta Takahashi. 
does not want Jean Emmanuel to follow this up with a potential Asika's Chariot or a Moonvale region. So killing the mana source that would be created, even though in this matchup or even throughout this tournament, Reckless Stormseeker is the far more potent threat. Really awesome stuff here. And also, you know, he's got some wiggle room, right? Wow, another Dragon's Fire off the top, too. He was at 17 life. He can take a hit for three, and it's okay. He's also smashing for four every turn, and he has the ability to really protect his board here. Can he afford to mascot Exhibition here and leave up anything? Where are we at? Uh, like no. I don't think he needs to, uh, given that he's got the divide by zero, and now with the pro with only two cards in hand, I mean, just so likely that he runs out the Goldspan Dragon. As psychic as the pro may be, he still just needs to play into some of these threats at this point. Although that might change things a little bit with what he just drew. He drew a negate, which would give him room for Moonvale Regent with negate backup. And that's what he's going to go for here. Yuta can consider just using Dragon's Fire on it if he'd like. Yeah, I, I imagine you're going to go end step because even if Jean Emmanuel has a negate, Yuta has divide by zero, right? So he can just choose to divide by zero his own Dragon's Fire and then cast it on his turn to kill the Moonvale region. Very clever. As it turns out, it's just going to be sure that resolves down to 13 off of the Moonvale region trigger, but that means that Goldspan Dragon gets to keep doing its thing. The treasures are adding up tons of mana available exhibition. now. Now we're going to see Max Mascot Exhibition on the stack. That's going to draw a negate. And Yuta says, you know what? That's fine. As long as I have this Goldspan Dragon, I'm good to go. Oh. Tangle Trap from Jean Emmanuel. That's an answer for the dragon. Divide by zero is going to set back the other dragon. But remember, it doesn't counter it. It puts it back into hand. And with a Tangle Trap... There is an answer now for Jean Emmanuel, though he is uh, not currently able to cast it. Now the right. dragon off the top, nope. So Yuta's going to be able to get in for four here, but Jean Emmanuel will be able to kill this Coldspan dragon. But keep in mind, we still have a memory deluge in the graveyard here. That's right. I wouldn't be surprised to see Yuta fire it off while the shields are down. What does he need to find here, Paul? Just uh, any other way to protect his dragon, basically? Yeah, possibly. I don't know if he still has Fading Hopes left in his deck. I believe he there was a Test of Talents that may have been cyborged in, which is an interesting <laughs> choice, but if he does find it, it would be good against Tango Trap. He's going to get a look at a lot of cards here. Thundering Rebuke and a backup Gold Span. Now, that doesn't save his current dragon, but close enough. Well, and also keep in mind, there's a Hall of Storm Giants. That's, that's right. That, that, that represents a lethal attack here from Takahashi. So many different angles of attack here for Takahashi to win this game. He has his bases covered here. Even with the gold span coming down and Tangle Trap available thanks to that land drop, he has all of that covered with backup gold span with Thundering Rebuke as well. And there's only so much on Emmanuel can like, do. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting in? Because you can, tangle, you can Tangle Trap Goldspan Dragon, but you'll still die to the Hall of Storm Giants. Yeah, well, and now there's two Goldspan of Dragons, course. and that is the old Double Dragon. A little too much here for Jean Emmanuel Dupra, as uh, both of these flyers are going to come into the red zone. Either one of them is lethal as long as one hits. That will be match number one going to Yuta Takahashi. He picks up that critical first match. And he's one step away from being a world champion. Fantastic stuff there from Yuta Takahashi and John Emmanuel Dupra. They're really putting on display, Paul, the highest level of play. And uh, it's a pleasure to watch. Yeah, I mean, just the mind games too. I mean, John Emmanuel has basically memorized every single card in Yuta's list. And he knows what to play around and kind of what the chances are that he might have it. And every time he sees one of those one ups he's like, nice. Nice, you got me, you got me. Yeah. And at the same time, I just want to point out just the the level that which Yuta Takahashi played that game, right? He just made a lot of slightly unconventional choices in mulliganing and when he was filtering through his cards because he kind of knows what you know how he, he needs to employ his game plan, and he played it beautifully. Yeah, really great stuff from the feature. That's only the first match. We're going to get another one guaranteed, maybe even another one after that here at the World Championship. We're going to be back with more right after this.
Crazy Monday, I know it shows that I'm a little nervous. I just realized I. And welcome back to coverage here of the World Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Cheon. And we are in our title match between Yuta Takahashi and Jean Emmanuel Dupra. Now, the first match of the best two out of three matches is behind us with Yuta Takahashi having taken it down with his Is It Dragons deck through very tight technical play, some unconventional decisions, and a lot of mulligans really from both players. But it was a good match between the two, and we're hoping to get another one here as we get underway. Again, I'll remind you, if Yuta wins this match, we are done. We've got our world champion here for number 27, and that would be Yuta Takahashi. So John Emanuel, he's the one carrying the load. He has to battle back and win this match to keep himself alive. And we see more mulligans happening here, Paul. Yeah, we see both players kind of aggressively mulliganing to try to get those ideal starts. It's really kind of how you set up the early game. For Takahashi, you know, one of the most important cards in the matchup is getting that early interaction along with that smoldering egg in play. And uh, yeah, I mean, that first hand was pretty much unkeepable. Anytime you have an All Runes Epiphany in your opening hand, at least in this matchup, you might as well be down a card because it's going to take so long before that card actually ends up being relevant in the match. And as we've seen, he doesn't need it to win. He boards them out. Right. He's won all of his games off of Goldspan Dragon. It's just a, a good to have, you know, it's, it's a powerful upper end option for him, but it's certainly not part of his core game plan. He's going to kick things off with an interesting start here, Paul. He's going to have to make a decision between getting a smoldering egg on the battlefield or leaving up Juari Disruption. Yeah, and I want to point out Jean-Emmanuel Dupra on a mulligan to five. He's on so, five here, oh goodness. So not a lot of resources to work with. So this is gonna be one of those games where Jean Emmanuel the Pro probably not gonna have the luxury to play around anything. He's just gonna jam every single turn. How much power and toughness can I put onto the battlefield? And it looks like Yuta's having a similar idea here. He's just gonna run out the smoldering egg. He's like, look, you can't have everything on a mold of five. I can soak up a bunch of damage with this thing anyway. And it's going to be land go here from Jean Emmanuel after he ups the Ranger class. Oh, wow. And Yuta really wanted a different land to draw here because he's going to miss his land drop. He's going to have to play that Juari Disruption tapped. And ch and he actually chooses not to play an egg, wants to keep up Dragon's Fire here for the wolf. And he's going to successfully cast it, but the coast will then be clear. 
for Jean Emmanuel Dupra to resolve this Asika's chariot, which currently Yuta Takahashi does not have an answer for. Yeah, this is bad news for Yuta Takahashi. He really needs to get this egg going. He needs something to happen here. He has a lot of action with the memory deluge at the ready. He's close to being able to transform the egg, but is he going to get overwhelmed here? That's the question. There's a Magda off the top too. Yeah, that, that, was, that was not the worst draw because now you can go Magda, crew the chariot, play a land, and still have mana to go level three on the ranger class could help mitigate some of the cards that he lost by mulliganing to five. Okay, this has worked out really nicely for Jean Emmanuel. Boy, this would be so different if Yuta drew an island last turn. <laughs> he just would have been able to keep up his his uh, disruption and it would have been a totally different game, but now he's under serious pressure. As the Ranger class is on two, the Asika's Chariot is getting to attack here. That's gonna copy something as well. Yeah. Now, Yuta is still at 20. There is a formidable force being assembled here in Jean Emmanuel's side. However, as you saw, Yuta did not counter Magda. Yuta is prioritizing casting Memory Deluge. That's going to put six counters on the Smoldering Egg. So he's going to be really, really close to flipping that over and creating Ashmouth Dragon. Yeah, basically anything would do it. Okay, new cat, and he does in fact decide to put the counter on the attacking cat rather than the chariot. That lets the egg soak up three damage down to 16, goes Yuta Takahashi. Ranger class does get leveled up as you described, Paul, but here comes a massive memory deluge. Let's see what he hits. Gold span? Okay. Does he need the land? So gold span dragon is interesting. Yeah, he needs to go land gold span, but then he's not going to be able to play a spell to flip mm. the egg. That might be the more important thing for him here. He really wanted to find some sort of interaction. Yeah. But did not find it. And look at the top here of Jean Emmanuel de Praz deck. He's got a gold span dragon sitting on top. So wow. lots of pressure next turn. Just perfection here for Jean Emmanuel off of a five. And he did go for land gold span. Boy, having a smoldering egg on six is just Jeez. rough. It's so close. So does he just go gold span, attack, play smoldering egg as like a chumper? I suppose, but it's not Ugh. great. Not you great. Mean, having to play gold span dragon and attack when you're this behind on board <laughs> is really rough. It is. Well, he did it. Down to 16 goes to pra. There's a smoldering egg. Wow, Moonvale region on top of the library. I wonder if you just want to get in now, though, with the gold span. Right. It means you're giving up some value, but you're getting quite a bit for it. Yeah, because, it, I mean, if you're on John Emmanuel's side, you're like, okay, well, that egg's on six still. This is really, really dicey. I don't have a way to kill it. Do I need to just put maximum pressure here to try to close this game out? Because Yuta Takahashi is very, very close to turning it around. He oh, is going to cast okay. a gold span dragon, and Yusuf Takashi doesn't like what he sees. Race initiated. Here comes the team. This is going to be three different four power creatures crashing in. Yeah, and of course, keep in mind with the gold span dragon in play, you attack with gold span dragon, you have the mana to play the Moonvale region off the top with your treasures. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. He already had a treasure. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's nice. Why not have it all? Yeah, so now he can cleanly attack with these three creatures. They will all be 4-4s four as the, the cat will become a 4-4 four four with the ranger class. Then he'll have a Moonvale region and man, Yuta Takahashi is going to need a lot here. I mean, I, he I, doesn't I, play Burn Down the House, right? <laughs> so like... Like Alrun's Epiphany maybe, right? Yeah, that would yeah, be that pretty would be great. some business. It's tough because next turn, like, he can get the Smoldering Egg transformed. Like, he has stuff to do, but it's just been so much heat here from Jean Emmanuel. Okay. It's, and he's uh... just got the green light to route this Moonvale Regent as well. What a <laughs> turn. And, yeah, even Utah yeah, has to like... say, look, that was pretty <laughs> nice. 
Prismari command. Okay, so... Okay, so Prismari command will flip the egg. Mm -hmm. Curious to see what he does here. So Because if he makes a treasure, Prismari command effectively just costs one mana. Mm. Does he want to dig for more spells to continue filtering through? Yeah. Or he does could, he just he want to... could just do that. I, you know, that right. does get the egg up, gets most of the way, or at least part of the way for the other egg. Ugh. It feels like he's under too much pressure at only four facing down this board, but this is Yuta Takahashi here. Yeah, I mean, there is just so much pressure here coming from Jean-Emmanuel Dupra. Jean's going to block here. He wants to shut off the mana production for Yuta Takahashi. Because some of the more extreme lines like for example use a ca uh, yuta casting prismari command make a treasure i draw two discard two then finding like alrun's epiphany he needs gold span on the battlefield to make that kind of thing work yeah so Th this is so interesting because you can justify almost every single mode of prismari command here right there's an asika's chariot as a juicy target you can artifact, create treasures yeah. for for mana and and yeah he's <laughs> he he's gonna get maximum treasure here he's gonna target his own gold span to get a treasure off of it <laughs> and then he's also gonna make a treasure and then now he can cast memory deluge yes and we'll still have the option of probably casting one additional spell here he does and this have is a also, land drop to give this is also going to flip the other egg it and will. He will be able to shoot the magda most likely or a cat but is that still enough i mean it feels like no but i'm i'm here for it i <laughs> i want to see where he goes with this uh, oh, he so he needed anything. a removal spell. With expressive ah. with expressive iteration, he can kill two creatures, but I'm not sure that that's enough. We'll have to take a look. Oh, well, he knows. It's not enough, as it turns out. So that is going to be game number one, going to Jean-Emmanuel Dupra. On his mission to equalize, he has taken a very big step forward. Yeah, really wanted to find either a Thundering Rebuke or Dragon's Fire there to try to stabilize what was on the battlefield. So that's what he was digging for. Still, that was a pretty cool play. Yeah. Goes for, for maximum treasures, but he had to do it while his dragon was still in combat before it died so that he could actually sack the treasures for two each. I mean, I think he's very familiar with that line. For those of you who don't know kind of the path uh, a lot of these players, uh, 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 the Yuta Takahashi teammates qualified by playing a very innovative Jeskai Mutate deck with Goldspan Dragon, Prismari Command, and there's lots of little tricks you can do to generate lots of mana with that card. Even if it is for a short window, Yuta Takahashi falls there in game number one, but we're heading into game two. Once again, sideboards are going to come in. What a win for Jean Emmanuel off a of mulligan to five. Yeah, and this hand is terrible for Jean Emmanuel. Wow, I mean, bad. he has had some real stinkers. He's mulliganed a ton of times here in the uh, in the final in the yeah. title match. I mean, my is this another mulligan for him? I mean, you have the answer for the eggs, but that's not how you win this matchup. You need to apply some pressure early. All right. Well, he likes what he sees here. Two lander with Ranger class, double Asika's Chariot, Moonveil region, and a Dragon's Fire, but he's going to be down one of these cards. Whatever he chooses. Probably the Regent. But it could, could be the Chariot because it is legendary, but we have seen you to prioritize using counter magic on the Chariot. And U Yuta's hand is just just everything you want if you're a blue mage. You've got the counter spells, you've got the interaction, and you've got the card draw. You kind of have it all here. He also, of course, gets to be on the play here. He 
does. And, and Jean Emmanuel just kind of weighing out his options. Do you want to run into the Juari disruption? He's been stung by that multiple times in the title match. It doesn't feel good. But a lot of times with decks like this, if you give them extra time, it doesn't actually benefit you. As bad as it feels to run into a card like Juari Disruption that has such a narrow window where it's good. And being on the play here for Yuta Takahashi, one of the one of the big upsides here is the fact that he could have gone turn to disruption into iteration into land tap, and you don't have to worry about that turn four chariot. Now, given that he has plenty of lands to hit, he does mm -hmm. have that island in hand, there's really not a whole lot of pressure to run this iteration out. Might as well keep that Juari disruption up for potentially a reckless Stormseeker. Yeah, before we've seen him have to make choices on whether he wants to play a Smoldering Egg here, but he doesn't have one, so he's got kind of a different subset of choices here. It looks like Jean Emmanuel's content to just run out Ranger class while playing around Juari Disruption, but uh, Burning Hands is gonna take care of the only threat on the board for now. Dragon's Fire off the top here, and now it's time for Expressive Iteration for Utah. Ah, uh, and we got a miss. This Ooh, always no feels... Up. This always feels awful for any of you is it mages out there playing <laughs> really the iteration does. and not hitting the land. You just feel like, why is there no justice in this world? <laughs> you only got to look at the top three cards of your library and choose <laughs> one, you know? The good news for Utah is that he did have a land in hand, so he's not missing a land drop for the turn. He's, in fact, got multiple lands in hand. These decks get away with playing upwards of 30 lands thanks to the double-faced land cards like Juari Disruption. Great draw here for Jean Emmanuel de Pra. If he is going to stick to the plan of playing around disruption as much as he can, well, that was the perfect draw, right? A strong three mana card, you can go River Glide Pathway into Reckless Stormseeker to still try to leave you to strand uh, those counter spells stranded in his hand. Let's see if that's what he wants to do. It is exactly what he wants to do. Jean Emmanuel sticking to the script here, but Dragon's Fire should take care of this Reckless Stormseeker. So yeah, the, the answer is still for Takahashi in hand. Yeah, the, the problem is Takahashi just had both of his bases covered, right? He was right. like, well, I got Counterspell, but if you play around Counterspell, I still have the removal spell. He does not have that luxury this time around. Look at this. Look at this. This is interesting, Paul. So Yuta decided to play his Dwari Disruption as a land. <laughs> that actually prompted a fist pump from Jean Emmanuel, but Jean Emmanuel doesn't know that Yuta has another one. Right. Oh, and he's, he's going to nail him with it here. Yeah, he's like, please don't have it. Oh, I mean, this Yuta, is so rough. It, and, and Yuta, I mean, he, he's thinking, he's like, man, this is really rough because I really, really want to resolve Deluge this turn. But I mean... To, when you're playing against a man who's been playing Juari Disruption, around Disruption the entire time, right? If you have a, man, you'll give if, him the knife. If you have an opportunity to do it, you have to go for it. Oh, it's so good to play that one and say, no, fine, you played around it. You got it yeah. out of my hand. I give up. And then like, haha, I had the other one. Here's right. Memory Deluge now for you to Takashi's main phasing it. And he sees more of the same. The one big difference here is that there's a smoldering egg, which he hasn't had access to just yet. Right. So if he wants to get some additional pressure going, he can this turn just go land smoldering egg and choose to go with smoldering egg plus one of the other reactive spells that he has in hand. That being said, right now, I mean, he, he won't have an immediate answer to anything that the prop plays because he will only be on two lands. So we're going to see Egg here. Yeah, I mean, given the fact that he uh, only had the two mana left over, oh man, I, you know Jean Emmanuel would love to get that gold span dragon on the battlefield here. But uh, a Kessig Naturalist off the top is going to prevent that. Yeah, I think we're probably just going to see a, a Dragon's Fighter and Naturalist here. Although there's, of course, you killed this Egg, you're still scared of a gold span dragon, but... I think you have to try to do this before Yuta Takahashi has a protection spell up, right? We've seen that Divide by Zero come in clutch at, uh, uh, as a way to just deal with, with, uh, with you know, saving his creatures. Oh, 
It looks like Yuta's considering using Thundering Rebuke here on the Kessig Naturalist. He'd love to keep him off of that fifth mana if he can. He finds a more efficient way to use his mana. It is a more inefficient answer, but that would leave him the rebuke for later for perhaps a dragon or something like that. And he still gets to keep up divide by zero. So things moving forward for, for Utah, but we are kind of getting to that stage of the game that we described before where like that flashback memory deluge has kind of a lot riding on it. Right, and we have divide by zero into mascot exhibition here too. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, on an empty board currently. Yeah. And an answer to a dragon in his hand. Hey, it's hard to complain about that. And it looks like he's interested in just running mascot exhibition out there. It puts out, what, 10 power? Boom. And poor Jean Emmanuel just can't find that fifth land <laughs> off the top of the library. Yeah, really, oh. really needed that to have a chance. It did feel like it, didn't it? He he also is falling a little bit prey to his mana base. He actually leans on treasures pretty hard for his splashes, and um, he hasn't seen any of those, nor his blue sources yet. And we're going to see a main phase flashback deluge here to play around counter magic, and this is going to be really tough for John Emmanuel to come back from. Yuta Taka, yeah. I mean, being able to look at seven, find more card draw spells, find more removal spells, find more win conditions. And at the same time, John Emmanuel just kind of stuck on four lands, really only able to put one threat out every single turn. It's going to be very, very tough for him here. Oh, it's crazy. He's got to be looking at the top of his library. The last three turns, it just abandoned him by not giving him a land he needed for gold span to kind of turbo out the rest of this hand. Instead, we're going to see Yuta resolve that memory deluge. Now Thundering Rebuke down the dragon and get in for a full seven and his hand looks fantastic he's got gold span and expressive iteration finally a land for jean emmanuel you know i mean the nice thing for jean is the fact that he can go gold span attack disdainful stroke takahashi's gold span takahashi still has okay well <laughs> he also found a removal spell. He didn't even let you finish your sentence. I mean, it's so rude. <laughs> you want to lead with the Dragon's Fire in case Jean Emmanuel has some kind of removal spell to, to react to here. This also turns off Disdainful Stroke. Oh, sorry. Never oh, mind. He will still on. be able to Disdainful Stroke, but it'll make him use up all of his treasures. Fine. This is getting stroked. It has to be. Does Yuta not have red mana left over here? He does not. Was that a... I don't know well, if he, he got had... auto-tappered, or maybe no, he no, just no. didn't have he, enough red. He, he had three red mana, and that was for the Dragon's Fire and the Goldspan Dragon. Okay. Well, Expressive Iteration will have to wait for a turn, but it'll be really nice next turn, because that's exactly the type of spell he wants to see at this point. As he knocks John Emmanuel down to six, Briarbridge Tracker is going to hit the battlefield, produce the clue token... I mean, outside of this iteration, we're technically even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's trades on the ground, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really tough, because we've seen how powerful iteration is at this stage of the game, particularly in this deck that can find, you know, devastating five, six, seven mana spells to end the game. Okay, he's going to decide on a follow-up Kessig Naturalist before passing the turn back. Ooh. Wow, hello! Goldspan Dragon off the top of the library. Thank you very much. First things first, though, Expressive Iteration, because if he can get one of these creatures out of the way... Yep, and there it is. He I can mean, end it, gonna... and he found a Dragon's Fire as well. Yeah, so that's going to be the game. He's going to go Goldspan Dragon attack before blocks. Dragon's Fire the other blocker away, and this is going to be a lethal attack. Wow, what a sequence there for Yuta Takahashi, playing beautifully, and, well, his deck was very kind to him. John Emanuel just stumbled in the middle part of the game and was not able to get where he needed to go. And now all he can do is watch on as Yuta Takahashi finishes off his life total and evens things up here at one game apiece. Paul, this is huge news for this match because now Yuta Takahashi is on the threshold of a world championship. He can win this next game. He's got it. One game away from being the world champion here for Yuta Takahashi. You can tell that he's in full focus mode, but as we saw earlier in the tournament, anybody who was watching yesterday, when he made it into the top four, 
He screamed. There were right. tears. You know, he looked just like that before, right? He was yep. in full dialed in focus mode, but underneath that cool exterior, he's very emotional player and you know he's feeling it right now. Jean Emmanuel, though, he's actually the one with the pressure on him because he's just got a game with his entire tournament on the line here. Utah can lose here and still be our world champion. Yeah, I mean, Utah's been playing this game for a long time and winning the world championship, I mean, that's the pinnacle of Magic play. This is the dream. This is what everybody strives, where everybody strives to be if you get into competitive Magic, right? That's right. Play the best, beat the best. Utah has been playing since 1998. And if he can win this world championship, he will achieve really the two goals of every Magic player, which is to win the world championship and to get a Black Lotus. He, he got that <laughs> yesterday, and he will have both if he can pull this off. Beta Black Lotus, Marshall. That's right. He showed a picture of it. It is beautiful. All right, Juari. Disruption is going to come down to Suari Ruins here. Magda, though, to kick things off is right where you want to be if, if you're Jean Emmanuel. It's going to demand an answer quite quickly. Yeah, he crossed his fingers. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. Oh, I think he's going to kill it. That would also be my guess. But he did wait. He is waiting. He has a fading hope here, too. I don't know if that factors in much. It, right. It is a nice target, but, you know, he may be looking at those Prismari commands and thinking, well, that would be a much better card to use on a Magda. I don't know. God, you know what's really interesting here? Okay, now he's going to just go for the Dragon's was he, Was fire. he bluffing another <laughs> disruption there? That, well, that, okay, I mean, keep this in mind. This entire match, the Pro has been playing around disruption, right? Yes. So if you just let him attack and... and it deprives four mana. He, he, there's a very good chance he just doesn't run out the chariot there. Which he actually has in his hand this time as well. Crazy. Interesting setup here with the Prismari command. Because his Dragon's Fire did get negated, he could do any number of things with this Prismari command. He could even get quite aggressive and destroy the treasure as well as the Magda. He can make a treasure for himself and kill Magda. I feel like killing Magda is kind of obligatory, but beyond that, he can. he's got choices. Ooh, okay. Well, that's going to make things a lot easier for Jean Emmanuel. Okay, it looks like he wants to churn through his library. So take out Magda inside of combat. And then he's going to, sorry, not churn through his library, make a treasure token. But this does clear the way for Asika's chariot, doesn't it? It does. Now, Yuta Takahashi does have the backup Prismari command here mm -hmm. to kill a token and the chariot here if he wants. Good news for Jean Emmanuel. He's drawn another Asika's right. Chariot, so we can kind of keep those flowing. Now, do you want to play around Negate here? Do you just want to cast the Prismari Command now to get the artifact and a cat off the battlefield here? Yeah, what's the upside of waiting, I guess, would be my question. You know, what do you what do you get for waiting? A better target emerges or something? Yeah, I, I mean this this just this this certainly makes sense by just going for it, just because we've seen a lot of these players look to play more of a tap-out style control deck once mm -hmm. you know that you're playing against a deck that's boarding up to four counter spells. Okay, he is going to kill a cat and the chariot, and he's going to kill it while the killing's good. He also has Fading Hope here as well, interestingly. Yeah, he, he might use it on the token. Just, you know, it's one mana, kill a token, get the scry. Really right. wants to find a dragon to play, potentially. John Emmanuel can just attack. It is tempting. Keeping the board completely clear, keeping your life total really high, and then the bonus scry, that's a lot yeah. for a Fading Hope. What I mean, what else are you really going to Fading Hope, right? Right. So it's like, okay, the to a token is technically the best target because you get mm -hmm. it off the, the battlefield forever. You're not going to bounce Asika's Chariot, the Asika's Chariot itself. <laughs> There's a Jwari Disruption. Okay, a lot riding on this expressive iteration here. This could have world championship consequences because he needs to find yet another answer for an Asika's Chariot. 
So, I mean, but keep in mind, though, he might just want to go Shatter Skull Smashing for four here, right? It's like, hey, look, I'm just going to kill oh. your cats. You have one card in hand. If I do that, like, what's the likelihood you're even going to be able to attack me next turn? Great point. He needs four power to do it. There's creatures in his deck. Most of his creatures don't even do it on their own. Yeah, I mean, I think that going with Expressive Iteration is far more risky. If you miss on a removal effect, no, you're right. you take so much damage. Yeah, you're totally right, Paul, especially because with the tokens gone, the chariot gets a lot worse anyway. Like now there's nothing yeah. to copy. So the cats are done. It's only Tangle Trap. Is there a threat on top? Kind not of. Not enough power. Not no, enough it's power. Magda Brazen Outlaw, and that is not enough to get in the Isika's Chariot. So no Oof. damage here. And another oh. expressive iteration. The cards could start avalanching here Great for draw. Yuta Takahashi. He sees Smoldering Egg, Thundering Rebuke, Gold Span oh. off of this. I mean, all of the action here now, right? You didn't hit a land, but it's okay. You can just use the removal spell on the Magda. Play the disruption, have a land, gold span dragon into iteration. A lot of action here. John Emanuel needs the top of his deck to be very, very kind to him very quickly, or he's going to lose, and we're going to have a world champion in Yuta Takahashi here. Let's see Big what he creature? finds. Mm. Uh, Lair nope. of the Hydra, not really what you want to see here. He's got the Tangle Trap at the ready. <laughs> Another gold span dragon. So we're going to see Tangle Trap take care of the first one, but the second one looks like it's going to live. Down it goes, but of course there's a treasure left over. Does Yuta want to play Expressive Iteration here? Yeah, he can choose to play it this turn. Maybe even wait next turn. He didn't play a land this turn, so it's okay to run it out here. You will, you can Would get max tempting. value if you hit a land. Would definitely be tempting. John now, Emmanuel, he needs to use his one time here. He's got to find something to get himself back in this game and quickly. Yeah, I mean, that dragon is going to be tough. Uh, and the Seeker's Chariot, maybe, right? I know yep. it's legendary, but you play it to get the two tokens. That allows you to crew up the Chariot, attack, and then make another token. And then all of a sudden, you have six, uh, three two twos on the battlefield with the Chariot. That would be nice. Yuta deciding against casting Expressive Iteration, and it's a uh, land off the top for Jean Emmanuel. All he can do is fire up his Lair of the Hydra and get in there. I mean, doesn't do much. In, he can get in for five. He's going to get whacked by a dragon next turn. Yeah, he's going to get hit by the dragon and then Expressive Iteration as well. I mean, what a run here so far for Yuta Takahashi. Yuta Takahashi, incredible stuff. Everybody in Japan is just waking up around now. They went to bed knowing that they had a shot at a world champion, and they might be waking up to see him take a world championship here. He is tantalizingly close to the title. Yuta has to be thrilled to see this. And John Emanuel choosing to do this to play around a removal spell because, because now, and also get that additional treasure. Mm -hmm. Because now if he uses a removal spell on the Lair of the Hydra, he can still get in for four points of damage. Okay, it's Dragon's Fire off the top, but this Jeez. is the critical one. Gold Span Dragon hits the battlefield. Jean Emanuel nods in approval. He says, you and I were the ones who know how good that card is, my friend. He respects it. In comes Gold Span. Down to 16 goes Jean Emanuel. And everything's now is the time for down. expressive iteration. Everything's slowing down a little here for Utah. He's just, he knows he's ahead here. And this is a huge, huge moment for him. I love how focused he is. You can tell he's not distracted by the stakes here. Oh. He is simply playing it oh. out. Tangle Trap off okay. the top for Jean Emanuel means that this gold span dragon will die. And all of a sudden, that expressive iteration needs to find more action for Utah. It sure does. And now, if you're Jean Emanuel, <laughs> you want to Tangle Trap this first in case of a dragon's fire. I don't know how big you can make the Lair of the Hydra here, but you probably want to make it bigger than a 3 3. Could make it up to a 6-6 six, six after the trap. You want... <sighs> Oof. He 
He has exposed it, but he has the mana for Tangle Trap. He does. Now, Yuta. This is not going to be good for you to Takahashi. It's not. This is going to be, what, three damage? It's three on its base level, and he can reveal a card. That happens, though, but he's going to lose okay. his dragon. What is Jean Emmanuel playing around here? He just has to do it now, right? Yeah. Okay. So it looks like the damage was locked in no matter what. So. Yeah, so that part was fine, but Tangle Trap still kills the dragon, and now all of a sudden, Expressive Iteration, <laughs> wow, okay. Well, if you wanted to find some action, how about Expressive Iteration plus Memory He's Deluge? He's like, stop! Please! He really is. Smoldering Egg is a threat, and Burning Hands is a nice backup plan, so I assume we'll see Smoldering Egg at the battlefield, and that could be the threat that Yuta Takahashi needs to win. John Emanuel must find threats. Okay, okay. Briarbridge Tracker is one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that Lair of the Hydra is not going to be big enough here to survive Burning Hand. So, yeah, Briarbridge Tracker, you can sack the clue to find even another threat here. We do have a treasure to keep this Briarbridge Tracker at 4-3. Yep, so it can keep attacking. Oh, these are some good draws from our players here. You love to see it at this stage of the game. Still have to favor you to Takahashi here, but it is close. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, unless he completely whiffs on these deluges. Yeah, he really does need to, to miss for Jean Emmanuel to be happy because Smoldering Egg already has the four counters on it. Oh, he didn't okay. completely miss, but it wasn't exactly a game ending memory deluge either. I wonder if Takahashi wants the land just to guarantee a flashback deluge. Although it's really likely, at least in this turn cycle, that he wants to use a removal spell to kill the tracker. In which case, you'd rather just have the egg, right? Right. Okay. Nope, he is going to guarantee it. Lock it in, take the river glide pathway, and dragon's fire. <sighs> that was a land off the clue token there for Jean Emmanuel. Yeah, and I mean, with that deluge. Jean Emmanuel is going to have to string together two, three, four really great top decks to come, oh God. to come back from this. There's another memory deluge now for Yuta Takahashi. It feels like he certainly has the tools that he needs to get the job done here. He's going to pass the turn back. And it's a Magda Brazen Outlaw off the top. That is not of the threat quality that Jean Emmanuel needs to get the job done. He's happy to see a spell, but this is one of his lower impact spells at this juncture. Oh, I mean, look at the focus. Look at Utah. Oh, he is dialed <sighs> in a hundred percent. And you see John Emanuel is playing exactly how he has for the duration of the tournament. He's taking his time. He's making sure he knows what he wants to do. And then he's doing it. He's played beautifully for this whole run, and he is not changing that here. I mean, he's basically played this entire tournament as if his opponent's hands have been face up. He really uh, it's, has. It's just, it's, just been a, it's just been a true joy to watch him play. He could do commentary and not see the hands. Like... <laughs> oh, he sacked the clue, so now the tracker is not a 4-3. I think that was the... However, he it has does to play around burning hands, right? Yeah, because he wanted to play around burning hands. There's memory deluge oh. and divide by zero. But now, and we now can just the, kill it. the yep. burning hands plus two damage is enough to kill, and that gets a nice from Jean Emmanuel because once again Yuta Takahashi has taken the reins. In fact, he's been We're given attacking. a good game from Jean Emmanuel Dupra. We could be moments away from a world champion here. Yuta Takahashi passes the turn back over to Jean Emmanuel, who draws a land for the turn. He is completely out of gas. He has nothing left to give outside of this Magda oh Brazen my Outlaw. Goodness. Oh, and we're going to see Memory Deluge go on the stack. That's going to take care of Magda. 0 3 10 0. That's what we're talking about here. 
he incredible is, run for Yuta Takahashi. We saw the emotion from him yesterday, and now he's on the verge of a world championship. He finds Gold Span Dragon, the card that got him here, and it looks like it's going to be the card that finishes the job for him as well, as he has plenty of action to finish things off. Here they come. Bang, bang, two dragons. You're down to four. All he needs to do is put two spells on the stack, and this thing is over. He just needs to play two cards, get two triggers off the Ashmouth Dragon, and that is it. He can choose when and how he wants to do it. Jean Emanuel will not be gaining life at instant speed. He will not be interacting. It's going to be Dragon's Fire from 03 to 10 0. Yuta Takahashi is your world <laughs> champion. Oh my God. He can't believe it. He's staring at his screen because he can't believe it. He won. He's the world champion. Yuta Takahashi from Japan. Incredible. Living the dream. It's now starting to sink in for him. The emotions are apparent. He was so focused, so dialed into the match that it almost seemed like he forgot what he was playing for for a minute. Well, he remembers now. He's going to get his likeness on a magic card. He's the world champion. Unbelievable run. He never was defeated in standard. He went 0-3 in draft, and then he ran the tables 10-0 to become your champion. Huge congratulations to Yuta Takahashi.